Hi guys, welcome back. It's Carmela Rose. This week on my channel, I kind of wanted to get a little serious with you guys and make a video about what I wish I knew about the fashion industry. So just to give you guys like a little backstory about myself, I'm born and raised in California. I'm from a town that has less than 5,000 people in it called Running Springs, California. My family actually still lives there. After high school, I moved down to Newport because I was going to pursue college. I was working a low income job to try and like get funds to support that. And at the same time, I had this passion for, you know, taking photos and being in them and, and modeling. And so um, through collaborating with photographers, I actually got founded by an agency in New York and they took me on. I, I took the leap. I moved to L.A. I got signed there and I got signed in Miami. In the few months, like I was traveling the world, working with brands that I always dreamed of meeting incredible people and just really growing into the individual that I am now. So that's just a short brief of that, but I really wanted to dive deep because I keep getting asked like, how is the fashion industry? I hear, you know, they're very rough on you or, or this or that. And so I really wanted to pick apart the questions that you guys have for me and just be as honest as possible and just, you know, here we go. Let's talk with some truth. <laughs> So one of the number one questions I always get is, is it toxic? And my answer is it really depends on your mindset because you can go into something and not be so sure about yourself or sure about other people and not as confident within you. And yeah, it can tear you apart. It's it's very, it's a very rough industry of whether you're supposed to look a certain way or be a certain size or be a certain height. And you know, some people are very catty, some photographers are creepy. I've been modeling for seven years now and I would say like over the past few years, like I've just had the best time. Going back to when I first started, I really didn't know much, you know, like I would go and I would be wearing like black underwear or maybe blue and they really don't like it when you do that. It also has to be seamless. So whenever you do a shoot or you do e-com, they always ask you to wear nude underwear. And for the longest time, I had no idea. My agent would text me and be like, what are you doing? Like they, they said it on the call sheet and this and that. And I guess the client would tell them like whenever I'd be there and be so awkward because I'm just like, well, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> um, another thing is nude nails. Like the nails I have on now would not be accepted um, for a shoot. They like it super clean, um, no makeup. Make sure that your hair was washed the night before. You don't want to go in with wet hair. Hairstylists hate that. These are like all the tiny little things that I wish I knew before going into a job, but I didn't. And I had to go through it, you know, just like anything in life, you really once you're starting to get into something, it's practice. Practice makes perfect. But when I did first start, I really didn't know too much about it. And so I kind of felt super shy and sometimes not intelligent when it came to certain brands or because I didn't know how to pronounce like a designer and my agency would like scold me for it or just laugh at me and like make fun of me or tell me that my legs are too big or that I need to fix my teeth or I have too much acne or you know, maybe this girl has like a better figure than you and you hear these things, of course it's gonna tear you down, you know? And that did happen to me, but over the past few years, I definitely do see it changing. And that's due to individuals who are super confident within themselves. And they say, uh-uh, that's not okay. I'm good the way that I am. I like the way that I am. And through that, like, clients, brands, photographers, like people are being so, they're just growing and it's growing into something so beautiful. And so when people ask me if it's toxic, yeah, like it can be, but it's all what you make it. And I really, really, I really, really agree with that. So someone wrote to me and they asked me if I had a funny story about any job that I did. I do. I have a couple funny stories. I can tell you really great ones. But I have one in particular that I will remember forever. And I swear I'm not hard to work with at all. I'm actually quite fun. But I actually flew to Sweden one time and I had a client, I'm not gonna say who, 
And I was working with them and I couldn't speak their language at all. Like I'm just sitting there. They were kind of like rude to me and aggressive. And so I really had no idea like how to handle it. I just started modeling and I was in a weird place that I have never been before. I just did not feel confident. Like the way that the girl did my makeup and my hair, like I just felt like a clown. Like they literally made me a clown and then they put me in front of a camera. And then here I'm supposed to be modeling for a huge web like e-com website and I'm just like what do I do like I need to go to the bathroom I need to call my agent hey so and so like what am I supposed to do do I say something how do I say it because I don't speak Swedish <laughs> and so I get back after being on the phone right and telling my agent and I get back and I just sit there and I'm just like so scared and I'm so young I'm just like okay like I just don't really know what to do I don't know how to like tell them that I don't feel comfortable, I don't feel confident, like I just feel like there's tension. And I just sat there and I was just quiet. I, I did what I needed to do, but I didn't really talk. And because I didn't talk, they called my agent that night and they said that we are sending her home. I had one full day like in Sweden and the next day I left and I went back home and I got kicked off of my job because I was quiet. And I remember just being so sad, like crying, calling my mom, calling, calling my agent and being like, I swear, like I wasn't, I wasn't bad. I just didn't know what to do. Like I'm, I'm from America. Like I don't speak Swedish. I, I didn't know what to do in that situation. And I just didn't feel the best, you know, like I felt like I wasn't working with the best either or even if I didn't like maybe what they did to me, um, hair and makeup wise. It was just a very odd moment because it's never happened before ever. Like I always have really good feedback from clients and I was just like traumatized. I made sure after every single shoot, like no matter what happened, even if they were being rude to me, you know, I was just like, Hey guys, I'm all right. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know, just, you have to be like that. And that's definitely some advice that for anybody that's trying to model as well is just constantly, constantly have that smile on because hey, there's a thing that agents always say, you fake it till you make it. And unfortunately with brands, that is true. Sometimes you get a few bad apples and that happened and I'm still like, wait, that really happened. That was very odd. <laughs> so not everything about the fashion industry is bad of course there's good things as well but right now we're tackling the questions that you guys have for me and one of the number one topics right now and it still is a thing but it's definitely getting better is body imaging and when i first started i remember having agencies be like okay we'll sign you but you need to lose you need to get to a size 34 and i was a size 36 and you know i would go to castings or maybe i was looking for a new agency and they would give me the feedback that my hips were too big that i needed to run five miles a day to trim them down and you know you know stick to a certain diet that of course if i ate all that stuff which i did try it's just not going to make me happy it's not going to make me fulfilled and feel healthy you know certain body shapes you just can't do that like my hips don't get smaller and if it if I did I would be unhealthy you know I wouldn't I'd be lethargic I wouldn't have any energy at all I would have headaches and I've experienced that before because I wanted to model so bad that I used to run four miles a day which isn't bad that's actually really good for you but I would barely eat anything I just was overworking myself so much and not taking care of myself I just was unhappy i felt dehydrated all the time i didn't have any energy which i needed energy because i was working at early hours for long hours as well it wasn't fun it was not a fun thing like a thing that i would always be told is okay you have to be a size like you can you can have like a bigger bust like 36 you know 32 to 36 that's great but your waist needs to be like a, a 23 24 and then your hips a 34 and I'm 5'8 I'm not that tall so they really 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 wanted to slim me down because if my hips were bigger then I look shorter which in the modeling industry of course they want you to look taller usually the ideal height for modeling is about 5'9 and above and I'm 5'8 like barely cutting it 
And so I tried everything that I could and that was one of the number one things that they suggested was run four miles a day, be careful on what you eat, like literally just the littlest things. Um, and it just did not make me happy at all. You know, you can be super skinny, but you could still not be healthy. And so I eventually started speaking up during that time, of course, like others are speaking up too. And so brands are seeing it, photographers are seeing it, agencies are seeing it. And through everyone's voices, just this change really happened in the industry. And it's been so beautiful. We still have lots more to go, but when it comes to body imaging, I definitely think that the fashion industry is finally getting it, finally, <laughs> but it's definitely going somewhere. It's very inspiring and I'm very excited to see where it goes. So I know as we're talking, maybe it seems like we're talking about a lot of negativity, but really the fashion industry has a lot of good things about it as well. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. And I've met the most beautiful people I've ever met in my whole entire life that are still in my life now. I continue to meet more. I just feel so creative and inspired all the time through people's imagery or people's lives even. And the way that we're able to share that, like how I'm doing this with you guys right now. And so I think the fashion industry has such good things about it as well. Like I said in the beginning, it's just really about your mindset and how you pick at it, right? Just like how you pick at anything. Of course you can find, you know, your bad apples, but you also have your good apples. And I, I do love the industry and I will continue to love it, but as I use my voice, I will love it. And I think that's the key. All right, you guys, so that's all the time I have for now. But I'm actually going to be turning this into a series because I have so much more that I would like to uncover with you. And if you guys have any more questions about the fashion industry, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer those questions in my next video to this series. But really, I just wanted to thank you all so much for supporting me. Um, I'm just, because of you, I'm able to share my story and this is just blows me away every single day. I'm super grateful for it, you guys. But don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.